So I want to thank my mate Ad for taking this uh, video. Um, I've been riding all these mid-lengths, uh, mainly twins and quads, for the last couple of years. I've been very lucky to have the opportunity to ride them all. Just want to say, not sponsored. Everything paid for myself or borrowed from mates, and then I buy them and then I sell them, so I can give you like pretty good opinions on how these things go, because I keep getting asked questions. How does the quad go, how, sorry, how does the longfish go compared to the Machado Seaside, the Nautilus, etc., etc. So, We'll go through them all, we'll talk about them briefly, and I'll put the dimensions at the bottom of each of them, and hopefully for the guys out there who are still, uh, you know, getting on a bit, but still want to keep surfing a lot, um, hopefully this sort of uh, info opens up your, um, your mind to some different ideas, some different options. I grew up riding short boards, so I've gone from going short up rather than riding long boards and coming down. Um, before I got my first mid length, I was riding, I think, a 5'8", and I've grown up for the last well, my whole life just surfing like 6.0 squash tail thrusters. So just to get a different bit of a background, um, that's why I've progressed up to these, is mainly because riding shortboards, I was having heaps of trouble with my lower back and it was just keeping me out of the water and it was just getting ridiculous. And so I started riding a soft board, a long board, a longer soft board, and I went, oh, these are good. So then I decided to get my first uh, mid-length made, which is the Will Weber Dugong. Okay, so first up, we've got this Will Weber Dugon. Now, Will's this brother of uh, Greg Weber. Yeah, Greg Weber. Uh, Well-known shaper, etc., etc. Will's an old mate of mine. Now, as you can see, kind of looks a bit like a CI mid-length, but came out about two years before the CI mid-length, and I just think it's a bit more exciting. Um, I've only ridden the CI mid-length a couple of times. Not a terrible board but for me, it wasn't that exciting. Um, I'm not a big fan of the, the big middle fin, the two plus one or the one plus two, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it goes well in good waves and it goes well with good surfers on it, but all boards do. So look, I'm gonna say don't necessarily not get a CI mid-length, but if you're in Australia and you, you wanted to get something interesting in a mid-length and you hadn't ridden one before, you give Will Weber a call. This model's called the Dugon. Now, as you can see, this has got the crazy quad uh, setup with his uh, curved fins. Now, I've ridden this in every combination you could think of. By far, it went the best as a quad. Um, and as a normal quad, it went really, really well. And then, as with these curved fins, it went extra well. Just loads up and coming out of turns just gives you that extra little bit of um, thrust, I guess. Now, as you can see, with my special uh, rocker measurer, which used to be on the end of a broom, as you can see, this is pretty insane because this has this insane double concave that pretty much goes all the way, all the way, all the way to about here. So that's, I don't think I've ever ridden a board with that much concave, double concave all the way up. Uh, it's pretty wild. As a result, it's super loose and it goes well in all sorts of conditions. Good for beach breaks at Bondi, good for point breaks. You pretty much can ride this anywhere. This is 7.2. And I think it's about 44 litres. I'll put the dimensions anyway on the, on the screen. Um, the other thing, I don't have any video of myself surfing this, but I've got some still shots that I actually rode this at Ulu's one day on a small day just to see what would happen, see how it would go. Never thought this board would be an Ulu's, and it went really, really well. But it was pretty small, pretty small off-season day. Um, as you can see through there, the rock is sort of all the way through the board, which is kind of a bit different to the CI mid-length. It, it has, it's a bit flatter, I think. But look, it's in the same family, but I don't know, just has a little bit more of an X factor for me. So that's the Will Weber Dugon. And next up, we've got the Christensen 610 Longfish. Now, as you can see, this one's been ridden a hell of a lot, a lot of dents, yellowed up. Um, this is the magic board. This is the one I keep going back to. Um, the glassing keels are awesome. Never had any issues with the cracking of boxes like people do get with these 20s. Um, ridden it everywhere. I've ridden it from one to two foot absolute rubbish to a week ago overhead ulus, and it went really, really well. I've had this board longer than all the others except for the wheel, and I've ridden this, and I'm back to this. I was riding this this morning. So the 610 Longfish, brilliant, brilliant board. Um, once you get the hang of it, 
there should be some footage I'll put on of this. It's got one of these cool tapered stringers, which I'm not 100% sure what they do, to be perfectly honest, but I figure they affect the flex, give you a bit more flex down the tail there. Um, I'm not a design guru by any chance, or by any means, I should say. Uh, and as we can see with my rocker measurement, it's got that uh, nice little concave going through between the fins there, and that goes up to about here. Um, incredible rails on this board, particularly at the front there. They're, all, ooh, they're almost like uh, almost like longboard rails there. They're, they're very, very forgiving up here, and then they start getting harder, sort of yeah, a few inches in front of the fin there. But um, Christensen is amazing, genius with the with the rails. So yeah, absolutely love this board. Um, Uh, now this one is identical to this, the other one. Why? Because it was on sale and I walked in the shop and I saw it there and I thought one day I'm gonna need another 610 and it's got very, very cool fins. You know, we're all a sucker for that, let's face it. Um, difference with this one, the keels are slightly back a tiny bit. Not by much, but a little bit. And uh, you can feel it. They, it's, it's got a little bit more drive, but obviously it's a little less looser. Um, the thicker stringer all the way, it's a stock board. I uh, was in there for quite a while. Um, got the extra layer of glass around here, around the fins, which looks very cool. Whether you need it or not on these longer boards, I'm not really sure, because the Christensen glassing is very good. And as you can see, it's got a deck patch as well for, what's that, two thirds of the board. Now, yeah, the Christensen glassing is awesome on these longer boards. I've never had any issue with them. They, they keep their, um, they keep their colour, they keep their their uh, integrity really, really well. But if I was going to order another one of these, I probably wouldn't bother getting the deck patch because I don't really think I need it. This board has a tiny bit more weight than the other 610. You can kind of feel it. I would probably ride the other one um, if I was going for surf somewhere sort of critical or something. I'd, the other one just a little bit more comfortable on. But generally speaking, bloody awesome board and you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with any of them. Okay, so next up, we've got the Twin Tracker. Now, this is a 7.6. Now, I originally bought this board after I was riding the 6.10 Fish, and I saw a mate of mine riding this, and I was thinking, I like the idea of a longer board, heaps of glide, just for those real small days to get you out there. Um, but because it went, went well, it went well, it's got a mad, as you can see here, that V is pretty big. It's pretty big through the fins there. Can, can we all yeah, can sort of see that, yeah? And that V goes up to, it's pretty much all the way up there, but it's it's quite significant between the fins. Now, I, I didn't dislike this board, but I didn't love it. Um, it wasn't quite doing what I wanted it to do. The combination of the squash tail, which loosens it up a lot. Um, I tried it with keels, semi-keels. Didn't really work, it kind of, it felt like the keels were fighting against the squash tail, so that didn't kind of work. Then I rode it with Morning of the Earth uprights, mediums I think, and that went way, way better, way better, and really loose. For a 7.6, amazingly loose, paddles really well. I don't know exactly what the volume is because Christensen doesn't write the volumes, but if I was going to take a stab, I'd say it'd be around 45, maybe a tiny bit more. Um, it's a relatively thin, refined board for, for the size. Um, particularly up around the front here. So you can get it under, you can duck dive it. Um, and it does glide. And I would say most people who would ride this would absolutely love it if they're coming from short boards. I think the problem with me is I was coming from the long fish and the long fish is so fast and has so much drive that I just found it didn't really do what I wanted that seven, six, I thought longer board to do, which was to ride it on like really small days. It didn't really work for me, for that that well. It didn't, didn't go terrible, but it worked. It wasn't quite what I wanted. So in the end, I sold to my mate Adam, who's filming me now, right? Adam hasn't been surfing for that many years, and this progressed his surfing amazingly. He caught way more waves than he'd ever caught before. Um, he surfed way better, way more stylish, way more uh, uh, smoother. Was able to duck dive it, if he ever bothered to put his knee into it. Uh, 
he could get it under. And uh, I think it, I think it was a really, really good board for him. So, you know, I would say this, this one would probably be if you want something that's very user friendly and you haven't really gone mid length type of stuff before, uh, the twin tracker I think would probably be a pretty good choice. It's not too much different to the way you'd surf a, a short board. It's just that you got along the board. Um, yeah, I think that's all we have to say. Okay, so next up, we've got the 7-4 Longfish. Now, as you can see, this is kind of, I ordered this one. This is the only one of these, I think, besides the Will that I actually ordered. Because um, I decided that the thing I was after, a board with heaps of glide, uh, heaps of speed, and a lot of drive for real small days, or possibly bigger days, real was, was a longer fish, because I, I like the fish. So I ordered this 7.4. And number one, it was way better for what I wanted it for than the Twin Tracker. Not saying the Twin Tracker was bad, it's just that what I needed it for. As you can see, it's still got that concave. And, oh, look at that roll, it's just pretty good. It's got that concave and it goes pretty much up to, it's still there, still there, still there, up to about there. Now, a 7.4 fish, it's a fair bit of board. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't sort of guess at the, uh, well, I will guess at the volume, but I'm thinking it's got to be 50, 50 litres, maybe even a bit more, might even be like 52 or something. You can duck dive it though. If, you, if you've got a reasonable duck dive technique and you use your knee, you can get it under. But like, if you take it out on a bigger day, three or four sets in a row, you, you're pretty exhausted from it. But that's okay, it's, it's worth it. And because it's having four off and you, you're not even in the position. Now the interesting thing about this board, when ads gonna come up, and when I ordered this, the fins were originally here. Can you see, you see those two dots there? Which is just way, way far up. And uh, the moment I saw it, I thought those fins aren't in the right place. And I had to talk to the guy at the factory and the guys at the factory hadn't made that many of these seven fours before. And they were thinking that it was going to be sort of similar to the Nautilus template for the front fins for the Nautilus. And look, I surfed it with the fins up here for about two weeks. And it wasn't terrible, but it, it, there was a disconnect between the fins and the, the tail. They weren't really, they didn't feel like they were working together. And it was releasing really easy, which is not what I wanted for this board. I wanted a board that, that hung in there and had drive and, you know, for nice big carved turns on small waves. So anyway, I took it back to the factory uh, and I said to the guys, can you knock those fins out and reset them? And they did. So strangely enough, the value of the glass ins was that there's nothing in the blank. So everything's sweet. Now, this one's got the, the, the little deck pad, uh, the extra bit of glass here around the fins and it's got the deck patch on the top. Now, because it's a 7.4, you know, you're getting up into that territory where you're not that concerned about weight. Um, so it's probably a good thing because it's not a board I'm intending to sell ever, really. I'll just keep it forever. It's not a board I ride heaps, but I'll ride it sort of when it's small. And I went through a period to get used to this board where I rode it for a month, non-stop, no matter what the surf. I rode it in two foot surf, one foot surf, six foot surf, seven foot surf, whatever. Um, when I say seven, Australian seven foot, just a tiny bit overhead. Um, and it went unreal. It went really, really good, and it's very, very cool to kind of smooth out your surfing. If you're in a bit of a rut and you go out on a bigger board, and it, it, it changes the way you surf. So, look, this 7.4, I will say it's an acquired taste. Tony wants something different out there. It's blokes who have been surfing a long time and want to get a bit of excitement with how fast the board can go and how smooth. This 7.4, I'd say, uh, yeah, give it, give it some thought. Okay, so next up, We've got the Machado, the Seaside and Beyond. So I'll just show that up there. Now this board, this is the only one of these boards I think I bought second hand. So uh, this board, I saw it for sale and I thought, yes, Machado, been hearing good things about it. You can see, well I can't roll that, but that's got a V through the tail, but it's a double concave I think with a slight V. It's hard to pick it up there. and it, I'm not 100% sure what they do with this. Yeah, it's more like a concave all the way through, but it's definitely got, it's definitely a double. Um, with this type of construction, that LFT construction, I'm not 100% sure how it all works. Pretty sure there's some sort of <clears throat> composite stringer in there that, that mimics the flex. Now, 
This is 7.4, it's a big board, but I had no choice because it was second hand. I'd love a 7.0 in this or even a 6.8. But I will say, incredible board, incredible. Very, very light, because uh, it's epoxy for a 7.4. The, his, his um, keels came with us. I got a really good deal on this. That's why I didn't hesitate with this, even though I wasn't sure. Um, it goes incredible. So if you're thinking about, th these boards surf really, really easily. Now, as you can see, let's do it over here. Number one, it's got quite a bit of area up across the, the nose there, which is very different to that Nautilus that I'm gonna show you in a minute. That makes it very easy to surf. And well, let's see, it's got some rocker through the nose there, but it's not massive. It's it's just sort of nice. It, it's sort of rocker that makes sense on this size board. And kind of fairly flat through here, so it does cruise very well. Um, but it probably doesn't glide quite as much. Well, definitely not as much as the 7.4 Longfish. Definitely doesn't glide, it's not as fast as that, no way. But a lot more user-friendly, a lot more all-round. Um, I took this to a surfing location in Indonesia that will remain nameless and I actually wrote it at spots that you probably wouldn't ride a 7.4 out normally quite sucky ledgy reefs um, just to see what it could do as long as you get in early on it it goes really really well and yeah as I said that tail is a bit of a magician Machado because it, it's incredibly incredibly easy board to surf so I love this board and I would love a 7.0 <laughs> Um, or, or a 6.8 in this, but at the present moment, I, I won't be ever selling this because it's hard to, they're hard to find. Um, and of course it looks it's green, so it looks bloody cool. Okay, and the last one here is the Nautilus. Now, I borrowed this off my next door neighbor, Henry, because heaps of people have been talking about Nautiluses and asking me when I ride the longfish, oh yeah, if you try the Nautilus, and I hadn't really, I'd ridden it for one way prior. So I borrowed it for three surfs, um, and it went, it, it surprised me a lot, uh, shall we say. Now, first of all, I, I, well, excuse Henry's wax job, and it's, I'm not sure what, it's like a wax job in 1975, but anyway. Um, as you can see across the nose there, it's pretty thin across the nose. It has a real 70s feel, single fin feel to it across the front there. Very different to the Machado. Um, and overall, it's a pretty, it's a pretty, sort of classic shape for good waves. Um, in regards to the bottom, it's got, it's got kind of a double concave, I think, there, but yeah, pretty much all the way up. There's nothing too dramatic about what's going on in the bottom here as far as I could feel. Um, and he's, Henry had these uprights in it. I don't know what these fins are, but I'd never, I didn't change them, I just used them. Um, first day I surfed at a kind of low tide beach break about four foot and it really surprised me. It went really, really well. And I was thinking, wow, it, it was way easier to surf than I expected. And then the footage that I've got on here that I'm showing you is the next two surfs when the tide was kind of high and full, bit of a crazy backwash, which I didn't think would suit this board. I thought this board would, and I still think it's a, it's a good wave board, but it still went really well. and. Um, I didn't quite get it wired in the three surfs, but I feel like I would. And I, 7.0 seven, seven for this felt a bit big, even for me in this whole mid-length kind of, you know. Well, I know sometimes you get lost in the option forest when you're, you're talking about mid-lengths, but 7.0 felt a tiny bit big. I'd probably go a 6.8 or a 6.10. But as I said, it went really, really well. It's very responsive, really easy to surf when you get used to it. Um, it's got, a bit of nose rocker, particularly right at the end there, which you can kind of see on the vids. It's got that little uh, sort of beak nose thing there, which, to be honest, although it felt a bit weird at first, man, it caught waves really, really well. Um, particularly on windy, choppy days, it didn't get affected when you took off those little cross chops, which the fishes do cop a bit. You've got to be aware of this one handled that way easier. Now I reckon, man, for good waves, this board would be awesome, sort of anything above sort of four foot and like particularly a proper lining up reef break or something, this board would be awesome. As people use them as step ups and I know why now, because I definitely would too. I think they're um they're really, really good. Um the only other thing to say about it really is that it 
it's an easier board to surf than you would first think due to that real skinny nose across the front there. It, it, it just, yeah, it just cruised very well. Um, and you could throw it around. Um, so anyway, yeah, it, this surprised me, but not a groveler, not a one to two foot mushy groveler, not a beach break groveler, I don't think. I think you'd be better off with some of these other boards besides that, but for good waves, absolutely, really, really good. Okay, so just to, to wrap the whole thing up, when people talk to me about these boards, blah, 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 what I'd say is, if you haven't had a mid-length before and you're wanting to try something and easy, cruisy, can surf in lots of all-round conditions, something like the Will, the Dugong there, probably be awesome. If you've been surfing a lot and you've been riding fishes, maybe short fishes, and you want something different, you want to go mid-length, but you want something different, then I'd say the sort of 610 fish. The 610 fish, that's my favorite board. That's my all-rounder, that's the one that I like the most. Not for everybody, but that's, that's number one for me. Um, if I was pushed to say my number two board there, I'd probably say the Machado. Um, even at 7.4, if I was gonna go on a surf trip, which I did recently, I'd take the Machado and the 6.10. But I would prefer that in a 6.8 or a, or a 7.0, I think. Um, if you're sort of intermediate, beginner intermediate, hasn't been surfing that long, but wants to try mid-length, it's really easy to turn, and you've still got a chance to duck dive it, the twin tracker for sure, but with uprights. Don't go the, the keels because I just don't think they really work. Um, the seven four is obviously a bit of a boat, a boutique sort of specialty thing. That's if you want something that for small cruisy waves where you just want to have some fun and do cruisy, maybe sm small little point break that gets consistent, something like that. Um, the seven four. I know my brother has a seven four and he rides at the north coast of New South Wales a lot, like places like Crescent and Wadi goes and, and places where it's perfect often, but very small. And he's 7.4, even the pass when it's real small, he rides a 7.4 there and it goes really, really well. Um, the Nautilus, not really a, a beginner's sort of board. More people who surf quite a lot and you want something interesting in a step up type of thing. Um, definitely, definitely. Uh, it comes as a twin as well. I haven't ridden it as a twin. My mate, there's a video on YouTube, I'll put a link to it in this thing. My mate Charlie from the onboard store, he's, he's got footage of him riding at a Dulu's, uh, a 6'6 twin of his and he's ripping, but he's a very good surfer, so he could pretty much you know, ride you know, an ironing board and probably make it look good. But quad or 20, I don't know, because I've never tried the 20. But personally, my gut feeling with this was that the quad was, was right. It felt right. Um, so yeah, I hope that's helpful to everybody. I um, hope that gets you excited. Make sure you want to go and buy boards. Um, I know I've got to sell a couple of these, otherwise I'm going broke. Um, the last thing is I've got, I just got a 6.6 uh, Longfish, which I haven't ridden this board, but I've ridden my brother's. Uh, it went fantastic, like a short board, but incredibly fast. I didn't put it in this review because I didn't think it was fair if I hadn't ridden it myself, that actual board. So I've ridden all of these. I put some footage in this video, and I hope that helps you to keep getting out there even as the years progress, still keeps the, uh, we'll keep waxing up and keep paddling out, a wise man once said. All right, thanks guys and girls.